On today's episode of Locked On 76ers, the president of basketball operations, Daryl Morey, spoke to the media on Wednesday. We have to dive into some of the things that stood out to us. What was it? Were you buying it? We'll break it all down next right here, Locked On 76ers. You are Locked On 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome. You are locked on 76ers. I'm Devon Givens from 97.5 The Fanatic Radio in Philadelphia alongside, wait a minute, if you're on YouTube, you can see him, Keith Pompey. He's back, people. He's no longer in the dark, uh, and he's back with us live from Chicago, Inquire.com, Sixers beat writer extraordinaire, and he's here in the full flesh. What's up, Keith? What's popping, D? How you doing, my man? Your camera's popping. That's what it is. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Well, listen, man, uh, we'll talk about maybe some things uh, there going on, of course, in Chicago, but definitely have to get into this Daryl Moy press conference, and we will do so. We thank everybody for making Locked On 76 as your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On 76 is free and available on all platforms, including right here on YouTube at Locked On 76 ers Well, Keith, we got a lot of things to get into, man, some things that – Daryl Morey, the president of basketball operations, spoke on Wednesday. We need to talk about the direction of the team, uh, what they're going to do in terms of the coach, as they were, as he was asked about that, the timeline, if you will, of hiring a new head coach, and just simply the overall outlook of what Morey said in his 20-plus minute sit-down with the assembled media at the practice facility. Keith, let's start it off, man. I mean, 20 plus minutes, he answers stuff like he always does. Uh, but you know, did he really say much of anything? Could he say much of anything? He really did. He talked about letting go of Doc Rivers. He mentioned, Keith, that letting go of Doc Rivers was basically something that um, he did. He brought it to the ownership and felt like it was a change was needed, brought it to the ownership. The ownership cleared it. It was OK. Good to go. And that's what he did. So, Keith, just your overall thoughts to start things off here on what Maury had to say in this press conference. I mean, I felt like you really didn't get anything out of that press conference. I mean, like, let's keep it real. I mean, I, I think it was a lot of protecting. Like, um, I felt like, I don't know. It, it, you know, you got to have a press conference to announce the guy is fired. I would have preferred it if the, if the coach was there who was fired was there. And then you, he talks about it, you know, say something, but, you know, you fire him. Like, you know, I mean, first of all, there's so many unanswered questions there. Like, for instance, word is that people th assume and, and you're hearing that some people are saying that James Harden was the one who got Doc Rivers fired. So then Daryl Morey comes out and says, well, no, he didn't. I'm the one who decided. Right. And I want the ownership. So, Basically, the meeting was kind of like damage control. Then also, it says everybody knows that um, James kind of has them over a barrel, so to speak, where it's kind of like, look, if y'all don't give me what I want, I'm going to go to Houston and do, and, and they're going to pay me. So then it's like, and what he wants, you have to assume, let me get the coach that I want too. So then it's like, well, I'm not going to consult with them about the coaches. I heard he already started calling people, consulting them. So you understand what I'm saying, dude? It's like, to me, it was kind of like, this was a damage control meeting, a uh, press conference rather, but you really didn't get anything. Um, I mean, you know, he didn't answer any questions. It was just, we're good. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Um you know, yeah, Joel was disappointed the last time when we made a trade, but he'll learn to deal with it. He didn't answer any real questions. But again, it was all about damage control. You you walked away having more questions than um than than answers, right? And then also it kind of like the way he answers the stuff, it makes you think that this is all about James. The coach is whoever they get is going to be a coach who can basically 
play to, I mean, who can coach to James' strengths. I mean, that's the impression I got out of the whole thing. Yeah, and he mentioned that for the people who didn't hear it or see it in real time or have a chance to go back and look at it, he talked about Maury, we're speaking of, of how they've already, you know, have a list of candidates. They've already heard from a lot of people, Keith, that are interested in the job. I mean, it's an opening. So what is it, five five opening jobs now? And uh, so he, they've already heard from quite a few people about the vacancy there here in Philadelphia for the gig. And you're right. We didn't get much of anything out of it. And typically we don't really expect much, but, you know, a coach was fired. So you wanted to hear a little bit more about it. Uh, he was also asked about what was different, especially with Doc Rivers. Had he won game six or game seven to advance to the Eastern Conference Finals? Sure. You know, four more games will be played at minimum to, to see what the Sixers would do. Had he advanced to the Eastern Conference Finals, he was asked about would Doc Rivers still have his job? And he basically said, you know, well, probably uh, if, if they did that. And talking about the, the success of the season and with the success of the season, it was a success even though they didn't get to the NBA Finals because they have internal goals that they had that they wanted to reach and things would you know, be part of the MVP 50 plus again and all that stuff. And it was just as you said, a bunch of just the guy coming out, sitting down, fulfilling an obligation, if you will, and, and speaking about it. So not really much learned about the direction of the team right now, Keith, uh, going forward. He did mention that they weren't going to rush and hire a head coach. Now, looking back at the Milwaukee Bucks, who let go of Mike Budenholzer after their first round exit to the Miami Heat, that was a few weeks ago. The Phoenix Suns, after the Suns were eliminated in the second round, Monty Williams, he was let go. Um, they said it wouldn't take very long. I mean, they're not going to rush. I, I don't I don't know what that means. I, I, would you like to have something in place before the draft? You, you know what I mean? Would you like to have something in place before free agency in the event that trades could go down and then free agency happens? I don't know what that timeline looks like from now to the draft and then about a week later, free agency. Yeah, I mean, to me, when I hear that, man, it tells me that you already know who you're going to pick. Because, like, typically you want to hurry up and pick a coach or you want to do something because you got to deal with free agency. You got to deal with James Harden trying to come back I mean, see what he wants, the whole nine. So, like, you probably already have your coach pick, but you're going to make – but you don't – I mean, or or you have an idea of who you want the coach to be. And and then, you know, you, you'll see if if that's someone James and I want because there's, what, four vacancies out there? Four of them? Five, I think. Sixers, oh, five. Sixers Phoenix, Milwaukee, Detroit, and uh, I thought there was one more. Um, but go ahead. So, but so you know what I mean. So now it's only uh Toronto, same, Toronto, it's Toronto. So the same number of coaches keep coming up. Their names keep coming up. So with that being said, I'm I'm just saying it like this: like, yo, you going to stick around and and let the great coaches go? I mean, the top ones come off. You know what I mean? Why you decide or you want to do your due diligence? No, I, it sounds like to me they already know who they want, dude. And it's kind of because they know who they want. That person is going to take the job, and then that's when, you know, that that's when they make the announcement later. Because James, why would you why would you consider coming to a spot if you don't know who the coach is going to be? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you talking about with James? Yeah, like if James, you mean returning without knowing? Why who are you going to come? Why are you going to return yeah. to Philly? Yeah. if you don't know who the coach is going to be. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. I have a I have a dark horse coach I want to ask you about uh, a little bit. Maybe may be a coach. We'll talk about it maybe a little bit and uh, see what you say about it. I uh, wanted to get into that. And I wanted to talk to you, Keith, about culture. You know, culture of this basketball team. Been around it 10 years. The 10 years since the rebuild. And over the years, do they have the necessary uh, the culture to succeed 
and yes, past the second round, past 50, 50 plus win games in the regular season, do they have the right culture to succeed? We'll get into that on the other side. And I have a dark horse a little bit later that I wanted to ask you about where his name keeps popping up. We'll do that next right here on Locked On 76ers, a four championship team, which unfortunately the 76ers are not. There are four teams remaining. It's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors with eBay Guarantee Fit. You can be sure every part you need fits right. The first time around. How about that one? Just add to your ride and go to My Garage and look for the green check to know the part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop on eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride eBay guaranteed fit only available at two U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Welcome back here. Locked on 76 is your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow on the show. We'll dive deeper into a little bit. Maybe start to look at some individual players and some things that need to happen in the offseason. Start to look ahead a bit of where they need to go in terms of improving this basketball team. We'll do that once again tomorrow here on Locked On 76ers. Keith, you've been around this team for 10 years, man. Culture is important in sports. What would you say their culture is? And is it, in the end, a winning culture? I mean, I think the culture got better. I mean, you know, in the past, it was it was a horrible culture. I mean, it was a, this, a lot of dysfunction. It was a lot of jealousy. It was... Uh, it was, you know, the worst culture, probably one of the worst, probably if not the, but the worst, if not the one of the worst cultures in the NBA. You know, now it's kind of hard to describe it because, you know, you don't even know. Like you got James Harden, you have Joel Embiid, you got Tobias. I mean, you know, different guys, different personalities. Um, you know, before Joel didn't like doing stuff with teammates. Not really. He was just like a, a kind of like an introvert. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, the, the culture has changed, but I, I will say it probably needs some more or a ways to go. You know what I mean? Like, you know, the thing is, and, you know, they say you can do what you want, but it's crazy because, you know, you had James, like, after certain trips, like on the road, if they had a couple of days off or whatever, he would leave and go to Houston or, or go somewhere else. And then, you know, Doc Rivers at the time was like, oh, no, I don't have a problem with it. But now you're hearing stuff leaking that that was part of the problem. So that's telling me if that was part of the problem, then the culture wasn't that good over in there, you know? How so, much of that is on the coach and how much is that you, at the top? I mean, top it's at top. the top. It can't be the coach. I mean, here's the deal. Like, if the coach – I mean, it, I think it's, it's a tough situation to have a coach to be in. Because if you have the president of basketball ops or the general manager who had a relationship with him and they allowed that to happen before, and then that person has the power, like, what, what is a coach going to do? Like, the difference between coaching in the NBA and coaching in college is the college coach has the power. And the NBA is a player's league. And typically, owners and general managers want that player to resign. So coaches can get replaced or, you know what I mean, or, or a player will shut down and won't play. You know what I mean? So it ain't really – it's not really the coach. It's not the coach. It's not. And it's coach. funny because as you say all of that, everything else is going to stay the same, but they're going to have a new coach. And he's going to try to establish something, but what is it? Because if the culture is set and the culture is what it is and you talk about James Harden and, and all of that, if he's able to help and maybe get – that the uh, previous head coach out new guy comes in and tries to set something how is he going to be able to do that if everything is already ingrained in what you're doing inside the building and inside the locker room that's going to be the tough part for any coach coming in true true i agree 100 percent. and that and that's part of the that's the thing like and that's why i think that mike d'antoni might be the guy that they want because 
Yeah. I mean, is the guy they want because he dealt with it before. You know what I mean? It was just like, hey, this is what what's going on. You know, so that's what I think. Well, it's something that, again, that they have to correct. They have to fix. As you said, it's gotten better over the years. It has to get, get even even better, has to improve in order for this team to get where they want to be. I remember so many different things from over the years, the rebuild from Jaleel Okafor, Nerlens Noel, small things with Michael Carter Williams, right? All, all these things. And uh, I even remember the one with Joel Embiid where he got into that trouble and had to be sent home when he was trying to fight somebody in Utah on the staff. Yeah, yeah. You know, those things. And while we don't hear those anymore, that's not the only thing about culture uh, where he used to blow off workouts and because of his rehab and, and all kinds of stuff there, these things mean something. And when others come in and they see the star player or the stars, multiple players not doing what should be done, then that does set some sort of uh, weird precedent going on within the organization. And that can have a trickle down effect, especially when you get into the meat and potatoes of, of the season and the, and the nuts and bolts of it that you need that type of structure inside the building and inside the locker room. And you wonder how much a new coach is going to come in and change any of that, if at all. Now, he's already had respect with Mike D'Antoni from the James Harden piece. D'Antoni was here with Joel B for a brief minute, but was it long enough for the respect to be there the way that it probably needs to be? Not to say that Joel B is going to be an ignorant person towards the coach, but – you know, that, that previous relationship wasn't necessarily there. Maybe Embiid would look at it with him coming in and it's a James Harden thing. And how is he supposed to look at that? So uh, it's, it's going to be it's going to be fascinating to see how this whole thing plays out, especially the timeline, as we talked about in the first segment of uh, whenever a new coach does, in fact, come in. Um, on the other side, Keith, I had a keep hearing this name. We know him. Sixer fans know, know him. Used to play for the Sixers. I didn't expect to hear this name. And his name is out there, and his name is in Las Vegas at the top of the odds. I, Las Vegas doesn't lie. They know stuff sometimes. We're going to get into it. I'm going to throw this name at you. I don't know. I'm sure you've heard it, but this is the first time we'll talk about it here on the next uh, segment here on Locked On 76ers. Welcome back, Locked On 76ers. That's Keith Pompey. I'm Devon Givens here on this episode of Locked On 76ers, second episode of the offseason edition here as the 76ers are now into the start of the offseason. Doc Rivers no longer the head coach, and they're looking for a new one since they are uh, they have a head coaching vacancy. Keith, we've gone from Frank Vogel to Mike D'Antoni, Monty Williams, Budenholzer, all the usual suspects, Nick Nurse, and we have our opinions on all of them, quite frankly, uh, you even hear the names Jay Wright, Don Staley, etc. Those weren't all that surprising. This one, though, was very surprising. One of my favorite players during their time, he was here. But he was only here for two years doing ESPN work. Keith J.J. Redick, as a name that has popped up, interviewed already for the Toronto Raptors, his name has popped up on the 76ers coaching radar side of things at least it's out there really jj reddick as a as a potential candidate for the 76ers job no i don't go i'm be honest with you man i know people go off of those odds things and i, I just don't go off of them. i mean uh no no offense to jj but i i, I just don't go off of it i mean you know you, you're going to fire doc rivers because he can't get you out of the second round. You have a team that you think that's going to that you that you claim can win a championship, mm -hmm. and you're going to give the keys to JJ Reddick. 
when there's other accomplished coaches out there. No, nah, it just doesn't make any sense. And I and I get it. Like, you know, Vegas came out with it, and I saw a lot of people running with it and, and you know, some people writing about it. No, nah, I didn't. No, nah, I didn't. It didn't. I really didn't have a reaction to it because I, I don't I don't believe it. Um, I, I just don't. I mean, I, I don't. And, and not to say that he can't be a, a quality NBA coach. It's just that I just don't know if you're going to fire Doc Rivers and then hire J.J. Reddick and say, okay, we're ready to win a championship with no coaching experience. Yeah, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. No, I agree with you. Um, uh, when I saw it, it was like, come on. All right, now we're going too far by putting certain things out there. Uh, again, enjoy him on television when he's doing a game and all the stuff that he's done post-playing career. Uh, that's just not it, you know, to, to to have this in this situation where he would come in and be a head coach. I just don't see that as a possibility. But I had to ask you because, you know, it is out there. And while we've talked about all the other names, at least bringing them up, that one, of course, was one that just jumped out as, hey, man, we need to talk about this because this is just too much, even if it's just five minutes, because J.J. Redick, no. And the thing that, you know, we, we look at this situation where you had the first time head coach with Brett Brown with how he got them started with the rebuild. And then after the rebuild, getting into the playoffs and being almost a contender, couldn't get them over the hump. And that's where Doc Rivers comes in. Are what direction do you lean more towards when you do think about the head coach since everything that you just said, you move on from Doc Rivers, you bring him in, you bring in a new guy. Are you leaning more towards a veteran, veteran, or at least someone who has had experience on a bench because of the things that we've seen from Nick Nurse, Ime Odoka, that has led them as first timers to success? I mean, I, I guess I got to deal with some, first of all, it's two things. I got to deal with a coach that has championship pedigree. And also it has to be a coach that can coach all-star caliber players. You know, like, I mean, all NBA caliber players. Those are the two things to me that stands out. Um, you know, how far, how, what's your play postseason record? How are you good with in-game adjustments? And, 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 and what's the most important thing? your relationship with with Joel Embiid and James Harden. How's that going to be? So, like, that, those are the things that I look at. Like, you know, people talking about accountability, this and that, all that, you know, all that stuff is cool. Um, but at the same time, the reason why Doc Rivers isn't the coach is because he couldn't get him out of the second round. So I need somebody that can do that. That's what I need. Right. And maybe couldn't get along with one of the star players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. No. So, yeah, man. Well, again, uh, it's, it's going to be a fascinating ride here this offseason. Always always is with them. Never a dull moment with the 76 or so. We'll have some things for you throughout the summer as things go along. Keith is at the Combine and doing his due diligence, his work out there as well. You know, a lot of people talk out there, so you never know what might pop up in Chicago. Uh, but we'll be here with you throughout the offseason leading into the draft, the free agency summer league and all of it we'll have it covered here sixers related right here on locked on 76ers we want to thank everybody for hanging out with us here on this thursday here on locked on 76ers making us your first listen every day and every day is tomorrow uh we'll jump on the show with you here for our final one of the week it's been a long week folks after the season comes to an end and we'll wrap things up for you with you uh, tomorrow to talk about the 76ers next week we'll maybe even get into a little bit more of the roster overall and uh, what they need to do individually with certain players will be will they be back etc all that we'll have it covered for you right here on locked on 76ers keith do you mind letting the good folks know where they can find us uh you can find us wherever you get your podcast at we're free and available you can also go to the youtube channel and you can click on the liberty bell when you do that when you do that you become a new subscriber Right. So you do that. And then also you get notifications when we when we have new podcasts. But also, also, you need to listen to my man D. He's on a morning show on 97.5 FM tomorrow from 6 to 10 a.m. So to make sure you do that. Follow D on Twitter at Divine G975. That's D 
E V O N G nine seven five. Follow me on Twitter at Pompey on Sixers, and you can read my stuff and articles or the Sixers coverage articles in the Philadelphia um, Inquirer and Inquirer.com. Appreciate everybody for hanging out with us, Keith. Thanks, man. Thanks, D. Peace, brother. <laughs>